After being bitten by a radioactive spider, a teenager gains the powers of Spider-Man and discovers that he is not the only one who possesses these incredible abilities. Today we will recap the story of the 2018 film Spider-Man in the Spider-Verse. Miles is a teenager living in New York City who has just entered high school. After packing his bags, the young man says goodbye to his parents, as he is about to move to the college accommodation, which is on the other side of town. Miles does not have a good relationship with his father and, even against his will, accepts a ride to get to campus. The young man would like to continue studying at his old school, but he has managed to get a place at one of the best schools in Brooklyn, and Jeff has forced him to transfer there. All the students at Brooklyn Visions Academy are extremely intelligent, so Miles has to work hard to keep up. In his first week, he arrives late for physics class and meets Gwen Stacy, a new student. As soon as he sees the girl for the first time, Miles is struck by her beauty. That evening after class, he decides to pay his uncle Aaron a visit, and they both talk about the new girl Miles is interested in. The man then takes his nephew to his secret hiding place so that he can exercise his artistic talent and graffiti a wall. Since his father is a policeman, Miles is always scolded for leaving his art on the city walls, but now the young man has a big blank canvas on which to do his beautiful painting. While the young man is distracted, a spider that came straight out of one of the labs of a company called Alchemax approaches and sneaks up on Miles' body. After finishing the work, he goes to take a picture of his artwork when he is bitten by the spider and immediately his DNA is altered. At that moment, the young man gets rid of the creature and leaves. The next day, however, problems begin to appear. Upon seeing his clothes in the morning, Miles notices that his pants are too small for his body and convinces himself that this is because he is in puberty. When he arrives in the school hallways, he runs into Gwen again and tries to strike up a conversation with her. However, Miles misses all chances to win her over when his hand clings to the young woman's hair and he can't let go. After a few attempts to free herself, Gwen comes to the conclusion that she will need to shave part of her head, because only then will she be able to get rid of her colleague. Embarrassed, the young man walks through the halls of the school when he is approached by his supervisor, who claims to have seen him leaving the dormitory the night before. In order to avoid getting a scolding, Miles decides to run away, but coincidentally goes to hide in the man's living room and is easily found by him. The security guard then orders Miles to open the door, which makes the young man even more nervous and causes him to destroy the entire place trying to get his hands to stop sticking to the walls. Already outside the building, the young man starts walking along the wall and is caught by Gwen as he tries to walk to his room. When he finally gets there, he finds a Spider-Man comic book and soon begins to suspect that he gained powers similar to those of the superhero when he was bitten by the spider. Startled, Miles calls his uncle Aaron, but the man doesn't answer the phone. He tries to convince himself that he is still a normal young man, but new abilities keep appearing. The young man then takes the subway and goes to the place where he made his art the night before to check the spider that bit him and soon realizes that this is no ordinary creature. Suddenly, Miles is surprised to find himself in a battle between the Green Goblin and Spider-Man, who is trying to stop the villain from opening a portal to another dimension. Accidentally, the young man ends up in the middle of the battlefield and must run away in order not to be hit by the monster's attacks. Miles is about to fall from a gigantic height when Spider-Man hears his screams and runs to save him. It doesn't take long before the hero realizes that that young man also has superpowers and tries to reassure him. He then goes to destroy the machine to prevent the portal from being opened. However, before Peter Parker can complete his mission, another villain appears to foil his plans. Prowler attacks him with all his fury, which causes Spider-Man to be captured by the Green Goblin. At this point, the Kingpin gives the order for his employees to open the portal, which causes the merging of multiple dimensions. While trying to escape from the goblin's clutches, Spider-Man ends up falling in the middle of the portal, which causes the machine to explode. Minutes later, Miles manages to find his favorite hero amidst the rubble, and Peter hands the young man a key. He then informs him that only he can stop the collider. Miles' task is to use it to release the button and blow up the machine. As the young man walks away, however, the evil kingpin and his henchmen appear, and the young man watches as Spider-Man is eliminated by them. Then the young man is spotted, and Prowler pursues him in order to get rid of the only witness to the death of the city's greatest superhero. Fearing for his life, Miles tries to escape and ends up on the subway tracks. After nearly being run over, he manages to escape and lose the pursuing villain. After experiencing the greatest trauma of his life, the young man runs to his home and hugs his father. He knows that he cannot tell his parents what happened, so he just asks permission to sleep at home that night instead of going back to the lodge. However, he decides to leave when he hears a news report on the news confirming the death of Peter Parker, a 26-year-old who has served as Spider-Man for the past 10 years. The next morning, 
Miles goes to a store to buy a superhero costume and join the other Spider-Man fans to watch Mary Jane's speech in honor of her late husband. From that day on, Miles decides that he will be the new Spider-Man and climbs to the roof of a building in order to train his skills. However, when he jumps, he has an accident, and when he hits the ground, he discovers that the key that was supposed to be used to destroy the collider has been broken. On that winter night, as snow covers New York City, the young man decides to go to Peter Parker's grave to apologize for breaking the key. Just then, a mysterious man approaches, and as he touches him, Miles ends up repelling that guy away. While he is passed out, the young man realizes that in his hands is a web-releasing device and soon discovers that this is also Peter Parker. Just like Spider-Man, that guy was also bitten by a radioactive spider and lived a life very similar to Peter's life in that dimension. The difference is that, in his world, his Aunt May has already passed away and he has ended his marriage to Mary Jane. After this, the man became discouraged by the idea of being a superhero and turned to melancholy. While eating pizza in his apartment, a black hole opened up right in front of him and Peter was sucked into it, ending up in another version of New York City. When some policemen show up at the tomb, Miles must flee to avoid capture, however, he is connected to the new Peter Parker by a web and must take him along. When surrounded by the police, the young man accidentally causes Peter to throw his web at a train. At this point, both are dragged through the city until finally the vehicle stops and they fall under a busy bridge. When he wakes up, Peter is tied up in a punching bag and interrogated until he can find a way to escape. After breaking free from his bonds, the man leaves, but suddenly his body begins to collapse and Peter reveals that his atoms are confused because he is in the wrong dimension. So, the hero decides to go to the tower where the collider is, in order to try to use the machine to return home. However, since Miles has broken the key, Peter will have to break into Alchemax to make another one. The next morning, after eating a hamburger and french fries at a snack bar, the duo takes a bus on their way to the company's headquarters. After breaking into the facility, Miles develops a new ability and discovers that he is able to turn invisible. Hearing footsteps of people approaching, Spider-Man hands the young man a USB stick along with the password so he can download the program that will destroy the machine. Soon after, Olivia Octavius shows up and is surprised to see Spider-Man in her office. Peter tries to distract her to buy time for Miles to complete the mission, but the young man cannot remember the password and opts to take the entire computer. Just as he is about to walk through the door, Olivia reveals herself as the notorious villain named Dr. Octopus. While Peter tries to defeat her, Miles takes the opportunity to escape and runs into Gwen on the way. However, since he is wearing a mask, the young man believes he hasn't been recognized. After getting rid of Olivia, the duo ends up in the company cafeteria and all the employees grab their weapons in order to capture them. Luckily, they manage to dodge the shots and escape through the forest using their web to attach themselves to trees. Miles is still unfamiliar with Spider-Man's main mode of transportation, so he ends up falling in the snow and is chased by the staff. Soon after, Dr. Octopus appears and attacks the young man, but he manages to escape and runs away together with Peter. However, during the escape, Spider-Man's body from another dimension begins to disintegrate again and he ends up falling into a tree. Dr. Octopus then takes the opportunity to get the computer back, but what she didn't expect is that a third superheroine would arrive to defeat her and recover the device. In front of Miles, Gwen removes her mask and reveals her identity. She also came from another dimension and was bitten by a radioactive spider two years ago, but was unable to use her superpowers to save her best friend, Peter Parker. One day, while saving people, she was sucked through some kind of portal, which took her to an alternate version of New York City. Now that they know each other, the trio flees together to a safe place far away from that forest. When he sees that they have managed to escape with the computer, the Kingpin is furious and remembers the fateful day he lost his family. The man was in a battle with Spider-Man when his wife and son arrived home. Upon witnessing such violence, the woman became frightened of her husband and fled in a car with the child. On that day, they had an accident and ended up dying. Now, the villain intends to open an interdimensional portal to try to reunite with his family who belong to another dimension. On the bus, far away from the Alchemax facility, Miles shows Gwen the broken key and the girl claims to know where they can make another one of those. That night, the three heroes pay a visit to Aunt May's house and the woman is shocked to see Peter for the first time. Despite knowing that this is not her nephew, but a guy from another dimension, the woman is happy to be able to meet him and Peter feels the same way. Miles then asks if Peter had a place where he made those keys, and Aunt May guides the trio to the shed. Everyone is amazed to discover that that door is just an elevator that leads underground, where Spider-Man's real hiding place is. While admiring the superhero costumes, Miles realizes that Peter looks bad when he sees a picture of Mary Jane and tries to cheer him up. 
On the ceiling, there is a tangle of black webs and the team discovers that three other versions of Spider-Man have been sent to that world. The group consists of a private detective who lives in 1933, a girl who came from the year 3145 and has a psychic link to a spider that lives inside a robot, and finally, a pig straight out of a cartoon universe. What they all have in common is that they gained superpowers after being bitten by a radioactive spider and decided to band together to find a way back home. Luckily, the group can count on the help of Miles, who will take their new friends to the Collider so that they can return home before the machine is destroyed. The problem is that the young man does not know how to control any of his superpowers, so he will not be able to defeat the evil Kingpin when he tries to stop him from blowing up the Collider. Realizing that he does not have the trust of his friends, the young man uses his invisibility to disappear and leaves. With nowhere to go, Miles walks to his uncle Aaron's house. As the place is empty, the young man writes a letter to him and gets it off his chest, saying that he is tired of always letting everyone down. Suddenly, Prowler approaches the place and opens the window to break into the apartment. Startled, Miles tries to hide and uses his invisibility to avoid being found. When the villain removes his mask, the young man discovers that this is his uncle and is in shock. He tries to sneak out the window, but Aaron notices his presence and goes after his target. On his motorcycle, he chases Miles through the streets of New York City and causes a serious traffic accident. Luckily, however, the young man manages to escape unharmed and continues his escape. Meanwhile, Penai Parker and her spider robot work on making a new key. When the work is finished, the girl hands the object to Peter, at which point Miles appears. The teenager reveals that his uncle Aaron is the prowler and soon discovers that he has been followed, as Dr. Octopus arrives with reinforcements to crush those spiders. The woman tries to steal the key to the collider, but the superheroes do not intend to hand it over so easily and a great battle ensues. Minutes later, Prowler appears and Peter tries to defeat him, but is captured by Olivia and Miles manages to get the key. Being chased by his uncle, the young man climbs onto the roof in an attempt to escape, but is captured and about to be eliminated when he decides to remove his mask and reveal his identity. Upon seeing his nephew, Aaron is in shock and immediately releases him. However, the Kingpin is watching from afar and shoots his henchman for refusing to follow his orders. Immediately, Miles picks up his uncle and carries him away from there. The young man asks for forgiveness for having caused all that, but before he dies, Aaron says that his nephew is on the right path and is very proud of him. Suddenly, Jeff appears in his car and tries to arrest the young man, who uses his invisibility to escape. Seeing his brother dead, the man feels deep sadness and comes to believe that it was the new Spider-Man who eliminated him. Furious, Miles goes to his lodgings and his friends follow him. All of them have also experienced the loss of someone they love, so they try to console the young man. While they are gathered together, Miles' roommate shows up and the superheroes hide in the ceiling, but are eventually seen. At this point, the young man is startled by the invaders and faints. Miles then puts him in his bed with the hope that when he wakes up, he will believe that it was all just a dream. Worried about Miles, Peter decides to stay in that world to shut down the Collider after his friends leave. Although he knows that this decision will cost him his life, Spider-Man cannot take the risk that the young man will not be able to destroy the machine, because this could cause an even bigger problem in the future. He then uses his web to trap the teenager in a chair and leaves with the rest of the group. While trying to free himself, Miles receives a visit from his father. Although the young man won't open the door, Jeff knows he is on the other side and asks for forgiveness for always being so strict with his son. After telling him he loves him, the man leaves and Miles decides it is time to learn to control his powers once and for all. In that instant, he manages to break free and goes to Aunt May's shed to choose his superhero costume. He then climbs the tallest building in the city to practice how to use his abilities. Meanwhile, his friends break into an event hosted by the Kingpin and disguise themselves as waiters to get to the lab where the Collider is hidden. However, by the time they find the machine, it is already being turned back on and the entire city of New York is at risk. In an attempt to prevent a collapse from happening, Peter quickly goes to turn off the device, but Olivia appears again to stop him. When the superhero was about to be eliminated, Miles shows up to save him, and his friends are proud to see that the young man has learned to control his powers. Seeing that his plan is in jeopardy, the Kingpin orders his employee to increase the machine's intensity, and countless dimensions begin to collide with each other. Meanwhile, the rest of the group continues trying to defeat the villains and, seeing Penai Parker in danger, Peter Porker attacks the scorpion. He uses a giant hammer to strike the creature and the detective helps him deliver the final blow. Now, Olivia is the only villain still standing and fighting, alone, to eliminate Peter, Miles, and Gwen. However, as the trio prepares to defeat her, the woman is hit by a truck and becomes unable to continue the battle. 
At that moment, Miles sees the opportunity to fulfill the mission he received from the late Spider-Man and goes to shut down the machine. It is almost time for the superheroes to return to their universes, and Penai mourns the loss of her robot, which was destroyed during the battle. So she picks up her spider friend, and when Miles opens the portal, they both make their way back home. Then it is the mysterious detective's turn to return to 1933. After giving his hammer as a gift to the young man, Peter Porker leaves and Gwen also says goodbye to her friend before leaving. When it is Peter Parker's turn to leave, the Kingpin appears and Spider-Man goes to hold him back while Miles destroys the Collider. However, the young man does not want him to sacrifice himself and claims that he can complete that task on his own. So he drops Peter into the machine and says goodbye to his good friend, who is very proud to see the young man's evolution. Now Miles must defeat his opponent alone, and during the battle they both end up inside a train. The Kingpin hits the young man several times and is about to eliminate him when he sees alternate versions of his wife and son. Seeing what a monster her husband has become, Vanessa runs away from him once again, which makes the man even angrier. During the duel, Jeff appears and watches the whole fight, and when he sees Spider-Man at a disadvantage, he starts shouting to encourage him. Seeing his father, Miles feels even more motivated to win that battle, and after hitting his enemy with a burst of energy, he throws his body against the machine to cause the explosion. While the collider is being destroyed, everything around it is sucked into it, and the explosion happens soon after. When he finally manages to accomplish his mission, Miles calls his father and says he is sorry for his uncle's death. After all that has happened, Jeff knows that it was not Spider-Man who attacked Aaron and intends to find out who it was that caused his brother's death. After hanging up the phone, Miles puts on his mask and goes to talk to his father as Spider-Man. The young man then hugs him and, before saying goodbye, says that the criminal the cop is looking for is right behind him. From that day on, Miles became the new Spider-Man and took it upon himself to take care of New York City, honoring the legacy of the late Peter Parker. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.